What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Got a bunch of new decks from Unbroken Bonds to show off on PTCGO. Going to be getting started, first things first, with Charizard. And you can see that I named it Lactose Intolerance Art. And that's because when I was streaming, we tried out Mill Tank in the Charizard deck to see if you could heal the Charizard every once in a while, because that's one of the major issues with the deck. It doesn't really like getting damaged by non- GX Pokemon like Zapdos and things like that. So I was wondering if maybe you could use Miltank to heal the Charizard. We decided that idea was not really functional and that a straightforward beat em up Charizard GX deck, Rush Ram and Charizard GX, was going to be the best and most consistent route. So that's the list we got here. Gonna show it off after some gameplay. And I'm excited about this deck. It really has been performing very well against Zork and Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX decks, especially with the Mew that we got teched into the list. The Mew has got a bench barrier-like ability that stops snipe damage, which means that Tag Bolt is not going to be coming into the equation here. So it looks like we've got a very explosive Potential for this turn one. I can Ultra Ball the whole hand down and go for a Dedenne, but first I'm going to Judge Whistle and just see what we get. Turn one Kiawe is actually just perfect, so I'm into that. And then we can Ultra Ball away some stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to do Fiery Flint, and I believe, huh, this is intri interesting because the Ultra Ball and all that, I want to keep like a lot of this. It looks like I might be playing some sort of mirror match or something like that, but we will Fiery Flint and we're gonna discard the Choice Band. And then I like the Guzma and we're gonna discard probably the Switch as well. Just gonna get rid of those and get these. And then I do have the Kiawe. I can Ultra Ball away two of these Fire Energies to go get a Salandit, which is something that I want. Salandit. I keep saying, I used to say it Sandalit, but so I'm getting used to saying it correctly. I definitely was mispronouncing that for a long time. So we'll get our Salandit here, put that on the bench, attaching Kiawe, and then we're gearing up for a pretty explosive turn two here. I'm digging it. And I also have the option to go for a turn two Guzma if I want to just like nuke something on my opponent's side of the field. The turn two Flare Strike Guzma for 230 damage. I did Ultra Ball away. The Choice Band could have been a potential Guzma turn two for 260. If I decided to not put the Salandit down, I could have just gone for a turn two Guzma for potential 300 with Double Blaze GX. So we've got a lot going on here. It looks like uh, this is an interesting list. It plays Ultra Space, Nine Tails, and Turtonator. Turtonator is a cool tech that we're seeing in a lot of these fire decks and it does perform well against stall the stall decks that are going to be coming out are going to feature lucario mel metal gx since that is weak to fire they do play a bronzong and the bronzong makes it so that uh, their deck is not affected by fire pokemon's attacks and then turtonator costs fire energy to use explosive jet but is not a fire type pokemon so very good for that uh, I've got a pretty sweet starting hand here, so it looks like we can just go ahead and nuke that uh, that Turtonator over there and not really feel bad about it. So let's just, uh, but I might also want to just save the Guzma. However, let's see, did they even play us a border? Nah, they did not. So I will just gladly just Guzma here. And I'll retreat my Salandit and just to Dene GX. So we're going to Dene change and just draw a bunch of new cards here and see if we can't set up Sure enough, a Salazzle. So that's fantastic for us. And then we're just going to Flare Strike and continue kind of just doing our thing here. Trying to take out the energy while I can since it uh, could just be tough to respond to a fully loaded Turtonator. The thing does no explosive jet. Discard any amount of fire energy from your Pokemon. This attack does 50 damage for each card you discard in this way since this does appear to be a non-GX oriented deck. I am a little bit worried about keeping up the traits since we do give up three prizes with Reshiram and Charizard GX when it gets knocked out. I want to make sure that we are on top of uh, the traits here. Now, since I did Guzma, I can't uh, Flare Strike again next turn. I do have Guzma in my hand, so 
I could double blaze or Guzma to reset my flare strike. I think that uh, just aiming for that Turtonator there on the bench feels pretty good. However, I would like to get a turn to Welder as well, just to build up another Charizard in case something bad were to happen. So I think that's just what I'm going to do. And we also get to draw some cards here. And then I can save the Guzma for later. We'll just go ahead and use our GX attack. I don't think that there's going to be anything too insane in this deck that I have to worry about. I could get a Mew. I could get another Reshiram and Charizard. The Mew is like probably fine just to have. I don't think that I'm going to have to worry about any Snipe Pokemon. But it does thin the deck a little bit, which is nice. So I'll just grab that. And you never know. I mean, maybe I could use Psy Power or something like that. And we'll poke a gear. I want to poke a gear. And then we can always save the Judge Whistle. Nope. Okay. I was going to say, maybe we get a Judge or something that I can use later on if my opponent gets a, you know, some draw going. But we'll just Judge Whistle to draw a card. And we got a Fire Energy. Cool. So I can actually use that to just draw more cards with Roast Reveal. And you can see how easy it is for this Charizard deck to just draw its entire deck out very easily with Salazzle and Dedenne. It's the whole point of the deck. We just want to go as fast and aggressively as possible here. Uh, I did miss my manual attachment last turn. It's fine. I don't think that my opponent is actually going to be able to kind of steady his board position against what I've got going on at this point. I feel like I've just got too much. It's an interesting idea. Explosive Jet. They want to welder to the Turtonator and then charge up a bunch of energy into play with Naganado and then just use Explosive Jet for a gigantic amount of damage. I think that Similar to the Little Blacephalon deck, this Turtonator is just going to struggle from some basic consistency issues. And from what I've seen early on in this new standard format, it is very much a run and gun, blow them up, big tag team Pokemon GX format. Pikachu and Zacharom GX is absolutely filthy good with the addition of Dedenne GX. You can use multiple Dedenne GX throughout the course of the game. You could use multiple uh, and I just have the Guzma here. If they don't attack me, this Turtonator's going down. You have multiple Dedenne GX. You can use to Dedenne change throughout the course of the game. You have multiple Marshadow potentially to limit your opponent throughout the course of the game as well, which is just phenomenal. So, let's see what we got going on here. I've got Guzma and Switch, so I'm just going to Fiery Flint. And at this point, I don't really see myself needing to Welder, but I'll keep one. And we're just going to draw the fires out of the deck here so we can manually attach to our Reshiram Charizard. And I'm kind of cool on needing to use any sort of Roast Reveal. I kind of just want to save my resources at this point. The deck can run out of energy, so we'll just uh, Flare Strike this thing. That's cool. And continue forward. So hopefully, you know, he hits me eventually. And if he hits me, then I can outrage so that I will then have a, an attack to use, right? If not, uh, we may get to a point where I have to retreat and flare strike with this thing, or maybe find another switch, though I am down to switch, and that might be all that we play in the list. I am down a couple of Guzma as well. Can use that Poke Gear to help me find a final Guzma, which could be very good too. But we see this, uh, the non-GX deck just kind of struggling to stabilize here. And I found that the Baby Blacephalon can be the same way. Three energy cost on a non-GX is a lot. And I do understand that you could Welder to it, but just I feel like if I'm using Welder as my supporter, I want to throw that energy onto a big Pokemon like Reshiram and Charizard. And I know that that... Supporter, the welder is like not going to go to waste. I have seen some of these non GX decks trying to use Wishful Baton as an option to pass the energy from Pokemon to Pokemon. However, I think that a lot of decks are going to start playing Field Blower. Field Blower is getting better and better with a lot of the control decks needing to use tool cards in order to be successful. You've got the fairy decks using the charms, which are going to need to be removed for a number of decks. You've got the stall decks are going to be using Metal Frying Pan and things like that, which all are very good to remove. And then also Power Plant, an amazing new non-Prism Star Stadium that is going to need to be removed for a lot of decks to function, especially to use Dedenne GX's Day Day Change. 
So I think we're going to start seeing Field Blower be a very popular inclusion index. I know that I've got Field Blower in most of my lists now, and I'm working on finding a spot for it in the Russia Ram and Charizard list as we have it now. It looks like my opponent, yeah, they just are going to manually attach again. And at this point, they haven't launched an attack yet. I mean, that just kind of feels bad, not going to lie. So let's just... Uh, I mean, I guess I can welder, right? I mean, that probably seems fine. I can poke a gear, see if I find another Guzma. I do have another Guzma, so I can just use that. I don't need to manually retreat yet. So we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll just Guzma up that fella here and then go down to two prizes remaining, in which case we are just pretty easily going to be able to just retreat, attack, and retreat and attack again and just that will be game and i'm being conservative i don't need to really roast reveal too much uh, you really don't want to get yourself in a situation where you're decking yourself out with the rush ram charizard deck one of the reasons we do play the judge whistle engine here so that you do have options to pull back that judge at the end of the game make sure that once you've got all your fire energy in play you can just judge at the end throw your hand back into your deck and that is that so, cool stuff. All right, one up against the Turtonator deck. Let's roll it again and see if we can find another cool deck to play against on the ladder. One of the things I don't like so much about the Charizard deck, it's very strong. I mean, it's obviously very strong, very consistent. The list that I have right now, I'm really stoked on. It's like a great skeleton of a list. It's like a great place to start, I think, for anybody looking to build a Charizard deck at a tournament. I think that the Dedenes and the Salazzles are just like must-haves in the deck, and uh, I'm happy with where it's at right now. The thing that I don't like about it is that it's very straightforward. We don't have a lot of tech cards in the deck right now, uh, but even then, even if you do play tech cards, like if you play the Turtonator or if you play like a Salazzle GX, it still doesn't really feel as if we have the same kind of options that we would have in a deck like Picaram that has just free retreat everywhere and then Tag Bolt GX. It just felt like Picaram and then also just so easily being able to attack with Zapdos, right? Feels like a Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX has more options, right? Being able to e easily pivot into a one prize, two prize, or three prize attacker. And sure enough, it looks like we are playing against the Feramosa and Buzzwold deck. So I don't suspect that my opponent's going to be too stoked about this matchup, but we'll see. I mean, if they are playing Feramosa and Buzzwold, they are going to have to anticipate that Charizard is something that they are going to run into. So we got to turn one welder here, which is great. I can just slap another energy here. And then next turn, I can just Guzma Flare Strike, what? Ever I want. I don't want this Salandit to get knocked out turn one, so maybe I look for another Salandit here. We've got Fiery Flint and Kiawe. I think that Fiery Flint is probably a good card to have. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to be using Welder again next turn, though. We could discard that. Kiawe, I'm probably not using that either. We'll just grab the Fiery Flint just in case. Cool. And it's going to be my opponent's turn. I think the next turn will probably be a Guzma to Dene GX situation. We do have to watch out for the fact that this Feramosa and Buzzwool deck will be looking to Beast Game. They really just want to end the game in one knockout by Beast Game GXing one of my Rush Ram and Charizard. So they really only have to take one if they have, what, eight energy attached to this thing? They take three more prizes. So we do have to... Watch out for that. Uh, that could end the game in one hit, though I don't really plan on letting these things stick around. However, the crazy thing about the Feramosa and Buzzwold deck, ooh, he plays weakness policy. Didn't see that coming, but that is going to be a big deal here for this. He's got Custom Catcher. He's just going to bring up my Charizard and hit it. Okay. So I think what my opponent maybe didn't plan on happening was me hitting him for 300 damage this turn. So that's uh, 330, mind you. So that's going to be a crucial bummer for my opponent. And sorry, but yeah, I don't think the weakness policy is quite going to do it on the Feramosa and Buzzwell, considering that Charizard just hits for a, ton, I mean, 300. It doesn't even matter, dude. Like, look at this. That's just insane. -o. 
So, double blaze GX, get out of here, 300 damage, and that thing is a goner, and that is that. We'll play one more with the Reshiram and Charizard deck. Nobody is safe out here. GX Pokemon, Tag Team Pokemon GX, turn two, 300 damage, uh, with Guzmas to boot, right? It's one of the reasons that I love the Dedenne GX engine in the deck too, is you just go turn one Kiawe and then really just burn the deck down, go uh, Dedenne GX, draw into a bunch of cards, hit the Guzma, target down whatever sort of tag team or Pokemon GX your opponent is trying to power up on their side of the field and just run them off the table real quick and early. Another card that I want to fit into the list is Let Loose Marshadow. It's one of those cards that just goes super well with this big tag team Pokemon GX engine, and I think that uh, Let Loose is definitely a problem with the game right now. It's like uh, not something, it's a card that's very good. It's just too good, I think, because combined with the the bigness of the tag team Pokemon GX and how easy they are to set up, right? I could just slap a basic Pokemon with well over 200 hit points into play, right? And then power it up on the first turn of the game and let loose my opponent and limit them to four cards. And then I've got like a 240 or 270 hit point Pokemon just barreling down on the first turn of the game and limiting my opponent to only uh, four cards in their hand. Looks like we're playing against a Whimsicott deck. That's super cool. This is one of my favorite decks in the new format as well. I think this deck is just so rad. If you guys caught my stream where I did the marathon stream for the uh, for Unbroken Bonds, I played this deck a bunch. It looks like my opponent's list is quite different from the list I was running, though. They got basic fairies in here and acro bikes and polka gears and stuff like that. I was running an engine with like Porygon Z and a little Nine Tails and things like that. I also got bodybuilding dumbbells. So let's see what we can do here. I do have a turn one Kiawe, which is phenomenal. We're gonna go get Reshiram and Charizard. I won't be needing the Mew in this matchup. And then the bodybuilding dumbbells won't do much anyway, since 230 is exactly enough hit points. So, or exactly enough for me to knock them out in one hit. Let's just go turn one Kiawe to my bench dude here, and the next turn we'll just Ultra Ball for Dedenne GX and just go. That kind of seems like the play. So we're just going to end our turn with four energy on the Reshiram and Charizard. Next turn, go to Dedenne GX and look to just blow this thing up. Now, unfortunately, we do have to kind of wait for my opponent to flip on like every single attack, right? That's like the annoying thing about playing against Whimsicott is that if they flip enough heads, they can really just beat just about anything with that fluffy cotton ability, right? Very frustrating. Energy Blow is an awesome attack. So is Toy Box GX. I just love this card. Everything about it. This card is amazing. Energy Blow can easily do upwards of like 300 damage. Looks like my opponent's playing Mina to power up uh, their Whimsicott. That's an interesting engine there. Not something that I really thought too much about since I am running the Porygon Z. I'm not running any actually basic fairy energy in my Whimsicott deck, just going the Porygon Z route and accelerating all special energy onto the Whimsicott. So here we hope that my opponent flips the tails. That's how this one goes. And uh, we burn it down, so let's go. We got Heat Factory, we've got Ultra Ball. Let's uh, let's get it rocking. I guess I should have Judge Whistled first, but whatever, here we are. So we'll do that. Get ourselves a Dedenne GX Full Art. Sick. Judge Whistle to just see one more card, which hopefully isn't something that I want to discard. That's fine, we'll get another Charizard and then Dedenne GX. And draw six cards. We're looking for a welder and two fire. Sure enough, we've got it. I'll fiery flint, and I guess I could discard the poke gear and the judge whistle just to go get myself some more fire energies out of the deck. Make sure that we continue drawing and just to thin the deck in general since we're going to be weldering for three here. So this is exactly what we want welder, and we're going to attach those two to the Bench, Reshiram, and Charizard. See three new cards switch. That's awesome. And we can Heat Factory for a little bit more. We've got the Fire Crystal and a Nest Ball. I really want to see that Salandit there. 
And then we got an option to go get Salazzle with the Ultra Ball next turn. Switch, Fire Crystal. This is all exactly what I want to see in my hand. So we'll just Flare Strike, and hopefully they flip tails. They did. And the Whimscot is a goner. Now, I think that, you know, this is kind of the major issue with the Whimsicott deck, is that if they just uh, flip tails, it's it's rough. You know, flip heads, it's good. Flip tails, it's bad. Oh, no. What is this? Slow kick. Psychic does 20 more damage times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. That is bad. So it's looking like maybe my Charizard is just a goner. Only a Ditto Prism Star in play. I was not expecting the Slow King to be a thing here, so that is uh, that is interesting. And I have to assume I'm just dead, right? Yeah, we got two, four, six, eights, right? And plus six, six plus eight, 140. Seems like that is perfect to knock out my Reshiram and Charizard. Fortunately, I should be able to respond. I've got a Fire Energy and my own Reshiram and Charizard here, and I could just judge my opponent too, which doesn't feel so bad since I'm gonna have a Salazzle on the Bench. I could just go, well, sure enough, they are going to be the one using Judge. So that's fine. They got Amina. They must not have had a Fairy Energy since they've decided not to play it. And I don't actually have a whole lot over here. Oh, wow. They ripped the Marshadow. Resetting Hole. Going to discard my Heat Factory. And they've got the Rainbow Rare Whimsicott on their bench. So this is certainly an interesting turn of events for the Reshiram Charizard deck. Didn't imagine that Slow King coming out. However, that is a pretty cool tech card for this matchup. So interesting stuff there. We had to hit a Fire Energy. Sure enough, that we did. So we've got Judge Whistle. We could draw one card, another Fire. That's fine. I've just got here, and we're going to just Double Blaze GX this thing. We need that Slow King out of the picture. Pronto! So we'll do that. Fiery Flint is a good card to have. So I can just thin the deck, get more fire energy out. And then this is kind of, you know, this is, I think, where my opponent's deck's going to stall out. They can go attach and maybe Toy Box GX, I think, might be the best option for them right now to just load their hand with better cards. But they could hit me for 40. It just feels kind of feels kind of bad to do that, especially since I have the option to potentially knock out this Whimsicott next turn. They're going to use Pokegear. They need to find a Fairy Energy for sure. So at least they can Toy Box GX and reload their hand with some useful stuff. But if they don't have another option to get Slowking out. I don't think that they're going to be able to do enough damage to my Reshiram and Charizard over the course of the next couple turns because right now they're stuck with zero energy in play, which is why I really think that the Whimsicott deck just needs a way to accelerate energy. We've got Fire Crystal. That's even better than the, uh, than the Fiery Flint for me right now. I can just get these guys back. It's cool. We've got this, and then I will just attempt to Guzma up, uh, potentially that. No, I'll save the Guzma for the Xerneas. All right, we're just going to go and, uh, yeah, try to knock this thing out. Flare Strike, hopefully he flips the tails. No, nope, he's got hits. So that is the most frustrating part about the Whimsicott deck is that whole thing. And now that I've used Flare Strike, I cannot Flare Strike again. So that's why I decided to save my Guzma for this following turn because I'm stuck not being able to Flare Strike right now. The scary thing would be if he decides to attach a triple energy, if he's got like a switch and a triple acceleration energy right now, then he could hit me for 3, 6, 9, 12, 130. It's not a two-hit KO. So we do see my opponent definitely in a compromising position. I do think that they would have been better off just kind of going all in with the Toy Box GX, just like hope you don't have a way to I and like hope you whiff right on the knockout there and then they would have just had everything that they wanted in their hand that next turn the dce attachment they're like starting to get to a point where maybe they can win if they just get like a big swing off on my reshiram and charizard they're still not in one hit ko range if i ko this whimsicott they've got let's see They've got three, six, nine. They're doing 100 with a triple acceleration. They're going to be doing 100 and um, 
what, 190, something like that. So 369, 100, 190. Yeah, so they're still not there yet, but they're getting closer, which is scary, and I don't have the Guzma in my hand now. So we're going to, oh, boy. We're going to probably, we can't Flare Strike again. And we've already GX'd because I tried to Flare Strike last turn. So we've got to, like, switch. Yeah, we've got a Welder on to the Salandit. As much as I hate to do that, this is just, like, our play right now. We've got Kiawe and Pokegear and Acrobike. So let's get Acrobike. And there's Dedenne. That's good. That could be useful for sure. And we just switch into this guy here and attempt to just end this dude. And then next turn, I can go for Guzma to try and take out his, you know, hopefully we just end it here. He flipped another heads. Okay, so next turn, I can go try to Guzma this one with the energy and we can see how frustrating the Whimsicott deck can be. This is like, it's doing what it's supposed to do right now. Just being very tough to play against. He is gonna Toy Box GX doesn't get to use the Diantha in his hand. I could Dedenne GX into either my Judge, which would be good to get this, you know, stacked hand out of here. Or I could Dedenne into Guzma and take out potentially this big Whimsicott over there. I don't think that I'm necessarily going to even worry about benching this other Reshiram and Charizard. I don't think that it's worth it because I think we're kind of all in on this guy needing to end the game for us. He's still not in a position where he's one hit KOing, so we're cool on that. Let's just attach this energy to the Salandit. Pokegear, let's see. I should have Pokegear first, it's cool. All right, and then we're gonna get Choice Band. And yeah, let's just, uh, let's just burn this hand down, cool. Discard, draw six. We've got the Guzma and the Switch and the Salazzle. So that's cool. I think I'm just going to go for... I think I just need to go for this one here. That or I could Guzma this guy, take it out, and then just try to end the game on any of these GXs, which would be very good. I think that's a guaranteed prize. He doesn't have a non-GX attacker, really. I mean, he's got the Diantha. So, like, I know he's got Diantha right now. So let's just attempt to Guzma, the one with... Let's see, is there any, any point in, like, not doing this? All right, yeah, I think we're just going to try and take this guy out. Cool. And then I'll just retreat... And I know he can like bring things back with Diantha. I don't think that there's anything that I super care about. I know he can Mina, I guess he can Mina and theoretically attach the triple in the same turn, in which case he could go three, six, nine, 12, 15, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. And then I guess if he's got a choice band, in, no, he's still short, so he can't do it. All right, we're gonna rush reveal, draw some cards. And then we're hoping that this is just going to be game here because I'm going to have to hit a heads on one of these, uh, or I'm going to have to have one of these Whimsicott's flip a tails. That's just it. I mean, that's kind of where the game has been the whole time. I'm a little bit below 50% right now. Oh, he's got Goosebump. I, did, I didn't even consider that. Yeah, he's just going to energy blow that. So we lost. Wow. I guess, you know... I could have potentially <laughs> just gone for the, I, I guess I kind of had to go for the Whimsicott at that point. I was just so tilted and forgot about the Dedenne GX on my own bench, but we lost to Whimsicott. Flip enough heads, Whimsicott can beat anything. So that's that, and uh, that's Russian Ram Charizard. So I guess we had to go for, I had to go for the Whimsicott with the DCE on that final turn. And he didn't have enough energy on the other one to Guzma knock out my to Guzma knock out my Dedenne. So I didn't do the math there on the Dedenne. I forgot about that. He's only had two prizes remaining. However, that's it. Rush Ram Charizard. Let's check out the list and see what we think of that. Whimsicott, I think, is a very cool deck as well.
So definitely keep Whimsicott on the radar. Very, very neat. And I think there are a bunch of different ways to play it. But this is the Reshiram and Charizard GX list that I'm rocking with right now. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub the channel, ring that bell, check out the Etsy store, Patreon stuff, and FullGripGames.com, all in the description below, as well as my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash trickyjim. Thank you all, everybody who has subbed to the channel so far, gave the channel a follow, or just checked out the VODs there. Special shout out to my Blastoise Patreon sub, Sarah. Thank you so much for supporting the channel as well. You all take it easy and have a great day. Peace.